How do you use stories to bring your presentations to life and get your audience more emotionally involved? The answer to that question will be found in your next Daily Dose of Public Speaking Wisdom. Yesterday, you heard how not to tell a story using what I call reporter mode. That's where you give fact after fact after fact. There's no emotion. There's no rhythm to the presentation. It, it's frankly, it's boring. How should you tell your story? Watch this presentation from a recent rehearsal I did. It's the same story, the same facts that you heard yesterday, but with a little bit more life brought into it with dialogue. This is a little bit longer video than our normal daily dose. However, I think it'll be worth your time because you'll see a much better example of how you should tell your stories. It was 2008 and I was a certified financial planner. Part of my job was to give workshops, uh, financial planning workshops. And on this particular night, I was speaking in front of 28 women. And on the surface, I thought, when you got 28 women, pretty good deal for me. I started the program as I always did, showed a lot of PowerPoint slides and statistics and data. And fairly quickly, I got this feeling Wrong here. I haven't given with my best funny line that always got a laugh. Let me get here. This went on for a couple more minutes, and I finally decided I gotta say something. Because if I don't, they're not gonna get anything out of this. This is gonna be a waste of time. So I stopped and I said, ladies, I can't help but feel that something's wrong here. I, I've either done or said something. I mean, just be honest. Tell me, have I done something to offend you? Again, long silence. All I could do was the air conditioning. Finally, a woman named Leslie in the back of the room raised her hand and said, Yeah, I got a question. What's your deal? What's my deal? What do you mean, Leslie? I've been to these things before. You get us all dressed up, you buy us wine, you buy us dinner. And last month, there was a guy who came in here, and all he wanted to do was sell us. It was one long sales pitch. And I saw a lot of heads in the room doing this. And I said, are you kidding me? That's your question? What's my deal? I just spent $1,200 on food, wine, and room rental, and that's the question you asked me? Am I trying to sell you something? It's exactly what I said. In my head, <laughs> on the inside, I was a tough guy. On the outside, I felt like a scared rabbit watching the, head, the oncoming lights of a truck. After that initial thought, I thought, oh my God, what am I going to do? These women hate me. I haven't done anything. I'm just trying to help them. That's when a story from years earlier popped into my head. I made the decision. Might as well tell it. Got nothing to lose at this point. So I said, Listen, I appreciate your question. I really do. Because I've been in that situation. I hate long sales pitches. And I'm not going to lie to you. We do want to attract new clients from these. But there's a deeper reason for me. It has to do with something that happened about 20 years ago. I stopped by my mom's house one day to, to just check in on her. And she was sitting at her round kitchen table. And you could smell the coffee brewing over on the counter. And the bread was baking in the oven. And my mom had this look on her face. I said, Mom, what's wrong? She said, I can't get any money. You can't get any money. I can't get any money, Michael. I can't get a car loan. I can't get a credit card. I can't get a bank loan. Nothing. What are you talking about, Mom? I said, You got a good job. You pay your bills. You took care of the books when you and Dad had the business on it. I don't understand what you're talking about. She said, you're right. That's exactly what I did. I am always good with my money, and I've always taken care of it. And yes, I did take care of the books. But here's the problem. When your father and I got divorced, everything was in his name. We talked a little bit further. And by the end of the conversation, she looked at me and said, I feel like I don't. that room with the women, I said, the reason I do these workshops, I don't ever want to see another woman look or feel the way my mom did that day. Again, silent, just the air conditioning. Finally, my eyes
eyes met Leslie's, she looked at me, and she said four words that changed the entire course of the evening. We're good. Hey, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly what happened in the room. Everybody started laughing. It broke the tension, and we had one of the best workshops we ever had. What did you notice in that version of the story? Were you more interested? Did you have more curiosity? Did you feel for the characters? My mom, because of her financial struggles. Me, when I was getting called out by the audience and I hadn't even done anything wrong. Did you also have an emotional reaction when you thought that I was a jerk because I was yelling and screaming until you found out it was all in my head? And could you relate to my reaction? Have you ever gotten mad inside your head but didn't show it on the outside? That is a good example of how to use dialogue to bring your story to life. There were actually three types of dialogue that you saw demonstrated. The external, between two characters, that would be Leslie and me, my mom and me. There was internal, which were my thoughts, again, when I sounded like a real jerk. And there was a third type, the nonverbal, when the ladies in the room were nodding their heads in agreement with Leslie's statement. You also saw my facial expressions before I said anything, before I exploded in anger in my head, or my mom's reactions when she was describing how much difficulty she was having getting money. Incorporating dialogue into your stories is not easy at first. If you're used to being the narrator and the reporter, you're, you're gonna have to come outside of your comfort zone. Some people have even said to me, Mike, isn't this acting? It is and it isn't. And what I mean by that is, it is in that you're portraying a character, but you're also reliving emotions and experiences that you've had. It's not like being in a movie or a stage play where you have to manufacture emotions for a different character. You or the people you're portraying, you were there, you experienced it. So there's a little bit of acting, but it's more just reliving the experience. To capture the essence of this seventh C to sensational storytelling, conversation or dialogue, Remember these words of the Hall of Fame speaker, Lou Heckler. He said, when telling your story, don't retell us, relive it. Take us into the scene so we feel like we're right there with you. There you have it. Those are the seven C's to sensational storytelling. In our next set of videos, you're going to hear about some additional C's that can take your storytelling to a whole new level. I look forward to seeing you in our next Daily Dose of Public Speaking Wisdom.